our class this semester is a a new step, I think, for me and hopefully for others in the positive direction. Women in Zohar is something that I've been wanting to teach for a while. And I think there's a lot to be learned about all levels of creation through women and through the, the Zohar's view of women. So this semester, we're going to begin with the creation of Adam and Eve. Focusing more, hopefully, on Eve. And then we are going to move forward through the Zman, visiting the Zohar's Chidushim uh, on all the great women of Jewish history. So each week, the classes will be a little different depending on what the story of each woman was and how they are reflected in the writings of the Kabbalah. And it should be uh, exciting and uh, en enlightening. So tonight, we're going to be begin in Parsha Bereshit of the Zohar. Zohar begins, Tachaze, come and see. Adam v'chava ha'da v'sitra da itveriku. Adam and Eve were created side by side. Now this statement itself is, is we could spend a long time with. Created side by side implies that they were like Siamese twins. One body, two faces. Matam lo nivra'u panim panim. Now the Zohar asks another question. If they were created side by side, why were they not created face to face? In other words, when we have a face to face relationship, that's a full connection of, of mind between the two parties. But elsewhere, the Zohar tells us they were really one, with two sides, and they had to be split, brought apart from each other, turned around to face each other. <laughs> the Zohar's question, though, why weren't they created that way to begin with? Why were they created back to back, or side to side, as it says here? I'm not sure, because in the Zohar, I learned, in, in, in Arizal, I, I've learned that it was back to back, but here... Calling it sad to sad, from side to side. The glass she can do kilo in tear Hashem Elohim ala aretz. Now this is a tremendous secret that we're not gonna, we're going to try to get at tonight. The reason they were created back to back was because God had not brought rain upon the land. So we see very quickly there's a deep connection between rain, the bringing of rain. And the relationship of this primordial man and woman. And that the bringing of rain is connected to this idea of being face to face. Now, face to face, we all know that when you talk to somebody, you look in their face. And it's very rude if someone turns away from you. And that's when if you're side to side, you can talk to somebody, but it's not the same transmission of energy as it is face to face. So the implication here is that rain is brought when man and woman are face to face. Now rain, of course, is not just water falling from the sky. May all of us get what we need, not too little and not too much. But rain is a metaphor for divine nourishment, for sustenance. It's a indication of our relationship to God, which is being suggested here as well. And it also, you see that it also reflects the idea of man and woman being, looking at each other, being in connection with each other, having communication with each other. Now we know that three, we're told uh, in the story of Elio and Navi, the Gemara teaches us that three keys are not given over to man, but remain in the hands of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. The three keys are birth, rain, and Tchiyat Metin. Now, <clears throat> rain being one of these keys is obviously at a, an extremely high level of power in the lives of all of humanity and in the lives of all created creatures here on Earth, that rain keeps everything going. So it's a tremendous impact. Higher power means that the key is in a sense hand. We see here that being face-to-face -face 
God created them not face to face. In other words, he wanted man to do something. He wanted man to trigger the rain. And he wanted the human being, this human being being one. In other words, that the first man was created hermaphrodite. That there was not yet a distinction between the sexes as we understand it. That a male and a female, nowadays, the Kabbalah, we, we've always learned, that um, every person is a male and a female. It's not a new idea, not in psychology nor in, in mysticism. But we see here that the original structure was male-female as one with these two faces. Now we know that they, that they were different in their height. Uh, Eve was, was built to, we know that Eve was taken from Adam's side, from the Tzela. The Tzela is a metaphor for Adam's inner essence. That God extracted from man, Hava. What does it mean? It means that God extracted the essence of man and then turned it around as a separate creation that, that he would have to reunite with. So according to, to the Zohar and the Kabbalah, the idea of finding your other half is not a cliche. It is actually a deep mystical secret of the soul. That all souls, when they are in heaven, are male-female. They're not differentiated. And then there's a, a split that takes place. And that's the, the act of creation. So this, see, the act of creation itself, there's this entrance, movement from unity to duality. Okay. Now, now, and the unification when Adam and Eve were first side to side was not fitting. It was not fixed. It was not the proper transmission of power from one side to the other. Now, this is on. The, we're speaking, of course. I I hope I'm sure that everybody understands. We're speaking in a non-physical plane now. We're speaking at the time of creation itself. When there was nothing physical, the Arizal has written that there was no physical creation until Adam sinned, that everything was in a hyper-light universe, that we were souls, we were real, we had communication, we had cognizance, we had identity, but we didn't have bodies as we know them today. But the soul body literally fell with the sin of the eating of the fruit. I like to use the word, instead of the word fall, I prefer the phrase, now that I thought of it, the phrase escapes me. The idea in Hebrew is yitzika, and that was the Zohar, in Hebrew that means literally to, to solidify or to materialize, that matter slowed, that energy slowed down and became matter, which of course relates even to Einstein's uh, postmodern, post uh, quantum physics, that the energy of Adam and Eve's soul was such that once they ate from the fruit, it, their, they, their hyper light bodies became physicalized. Okay. Now, this Yehud was not perfect when they were built side to side, so clearly God wanted them to be built imperfect. Now, this theme we see it throughout. Jewish history, the idea of imperfection being the source, the beginning of the pursuit of perfection. And we've seen this later, we're going to have, if we get to it tonight, the, when the angels were asked, should man be created? They said, no, he's going to sin. Why would you want to create something that's going to sin and go against your very will, the creator? And God said, not say it but tell God said, well, we're going to, I'm going to build them in my image. And so you see, God built them in, 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 in God built us in His image, but a little bit less than perfect. And that less than perfection creates the entire physical reality in which we operate. If we were perfected, we would never have had a physical world. The, the Gan Eden would have gone into immediately into the messianic realm. We would have skipped over the six thousand years of uh, recorded the human history as, as the Torah gives it to us. So the fall was built in to the structure. I think this should give us all a little bit of comfort when we fall ourselves. Because we're not perfect, and we weren't built to be perfect, we're simply made to pursue the best that we can do.